This video is brought to you by the MTG Tutor, where good players get better. Hey everyone, this is Magic Lover recording for the MTG Noob. Uh, coming at you today with a legacy deck tech for a lot of deck that I've been playing online for a little while. A lot of fun to play, so I figured I'd uh, showcase it in a few matches this week. Uh, the deck is centered around a uh, very powerful green sorcery, Genesis Wave, which is uh, uh, a wonderful X spell for green. Um, that ramps up very quickly when you can generate lots of mana. Uh, basically reveal the top cards to your library, um, put any permanent convert of mana cost X or less onto the battlefield. So you know, the optimal goal of this is to generate 10 mana, three of which goes into the casting cost, and then get an X for seven. So how do we do that? Um, uh, uh, five fetches, which I think is fine for being able to consistently hit a Dryad Arbor if I need to, or fetch a basic forest. Um, this is a deck that is already weak enough to wasteland uh, type effects with uh, four cradles and three temples, generating the majority of the excuse me the majority of the mana, the mana in the deck. I forgot I'll put this up here so we can look at the cards a little easier. Um, so Cradle, you know, generating basically you want a lot of creatures, and Temple, you want to use that to untap Cradle, get an extra use out of it. Uh, two utility lands that are helpful in Legacy these days, Caracas and Boseju. Um, Boseju essentially allows you to get off that Genesis wave. Uh, that can't be countered, so it's great for, you know, control style decks where you've got a few creatures out and one Genesis wave, but, you know, they're holding up Force or Counterbalance or something. Not that counterbalance usually hits a genesis way but you get the idea a um, couple ways to find cradle and temple one through artifacts um, expedition map is handy uh, in the deck as well as for crop rotations which gets you whatever you don't already have candelabra of Thanos is a good um, non-creature based way to untap multiple lands hopefully you're untapping you know a gatus cradle and a deserted temple Speaking of untapping, three Garrick Wild Speakers that untap two lands, uh, which is very helpful in getting another wash and rinse and repeat cycle out of Cradle, Temple Untap Cradle. A uh, couple other things in here Four Fist of Ironwoods, which at first looks like a very underpowered card, but it's in here for one specific reason, and that is for one colorless and one green, it provides two creatures. And since creature count is the name of the game with this deck, it is a great two drop for being able to make sure that you get you know two creatures for the cradle count. The trample comes in handy once in a while, uh, but more often than not I'm casting this on an opponent's creature so that if they want to kill the creature in response to deny me the, the tokens, they have to do it at least to their own creature. Uh, in terms of other creatures, uh, Eternal Witness. This is very handy by being able to you know, get back things that have either been duress, thought seized, killed, wastelanded away. Uh, typically off a Genesis wave, you will find a Witness. Uh, which can bring back the wave and rinse and repeat if you didn't get enough of what you needed to kill them the first time. Also, uh, Xanted Swarm, a pretty good you know one drop to be able to help get through against you know counterbalance or just prevent opponents from doing stuff at your end step, tying up their mana. But you know, uh, and then can be thrown in the way of a flying you know Gristle Brand or something if you just need to buy time. So not a bad little one drop. Uh, Nest Invader, same thing as the Fist of Ironwood. It's a two drop that provides two creatures. This has a slight edge over Fist because not only does it provide two creatures, but one of them can be sacked for mana. So this kind of ends up being like a soul ring kind of effect in that if you cast Nest Invader, you actually then get three mana off the cradle. So if your first turn is like um, forest, um, you know, Noble Hierarch, and then the next turn you can put down Cradle, tap the Noble Hierarch in the forest to put down a Nest Invader, and then tap the Cradle for three to put down, you know, an ex Expedition Map and a Fist of Ironwood. So by turn three, if you have a Garrick or Candelabra or a Magus or something, you, you know, you can generate a stupid amount of mana, which is the goal of the deck. Um, 
Noble Hierarch, just one of the best green one drops ever to be able to accelerate. And then, you know, not coincidentally, that Exalted can add up. So if you have a couple Hierarchs and a um, Exanted Swarm, you know, pinging away in the air for a couple of turn or, um, you know, four on the ground uh, does add up. Magus of the Candelabra, another, you know, Candelabra of Taunos style effect, hence the name. Uh, but this does count towards the creature count, which is handy. Makes it a little more frail, but it is uh, it is handy. I am playing a 2-2 two -two split, two Candelabras and two Magus. That would be four Magus if it were in real life, since I don't have any paper copies of Candelabra, since they're a little pricier in real life than, than online. Uh, two finishers of the deck, Elish Norn and Avenger of Zendikar. Um, both are the reasons that you Genesis Wave for 7 optimally, so that if you hit either of these top of the curves, pretty much this can wrath your opponent's board and make your guys a, a quickly insurmountable army. Same thing with Avenger. Uh, it makes spot removal pretty useless, um, so your army can grow pretty quickly. And even though Garrick is great at accelerating with the untapped two target lands. Uh, it's worth noting that probably half the games I win, they're fighting me on not resolving a wave, or killing enough to not resolve it, and I'll just get enough creatures and play, peck away a couple times, and then use his ultimate to get in for an alpha strike. In terms of sideboard activity, this really isn't tuned for any you know specific meta or, uh, or game. This is just for tournament practice room, but a jam for ley lines in here, which I can hard cast, but they're pretty handy for anything like um, uh, epic storm, ant based you know storm, something that needs to target you. So these come in against like red deck wins, anything that's gonna you know attempt to target you and, and beat you up that way. Three acidic slimes. This comes in against anything, uh, you know, like stone blade or uh, um, batter skull or um, affinity. Uh, show and tell with omniscience. It's great for you know they show and tell omniscience. You show and tell this, and uh, that tends to be disappointing for them. Scavenging ooze comes in great against you know graveyard based strategy. Uh, along with the Bajuka Bog, and then anything where it's an attrition fight like uh, like Rug Delver, I'll bring in Stronghold just to be able to keep getting you know key things back and hopefully out attrition them. And Kitchen Finks, um, another good utility card, comes in against like Red Deck Winds, um, either creature based or something like Zoo, which you don't see a lot of online, but if the life gain is important, um, pretty handy. So anyway, that's the deck, and I'll throw up some uh, some games of it in the practice room, and hope you enjoy. Thanks for watching.